With my Samela Mafumal. Mark Thompson. Get woke. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another edition of MIP. And as always, we check in with our good friend immediately upon the release of the monthly jobs report. He is the chief economist for Center on Budget and Policy and Priorities, CenterOnBudget.org. But I'm going to let him say hello to you in his own special way today from a special place. I'll give him the opportunity to do that. <laughs> hey, Mark, how you doing? Hello from Hi. Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't, hopefully Donald Trump is not listening. He might come look for you, uh, Chad. <laughs> I'm sure he's mad at Pennsylvanians uh, these days. <laughs> he is, but, um, you know, we, we had a, a so I, I, I voted by mail for the first time in oh. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has not, never done this before and uh, got it in early. Um, and you, you actually mailed yours in or did you drop I it? Did, because I did because I did it a, a pretty early. Um, okay. Pennsylvania was a little slow getting, uh, at least in my county, was, was slow getting drop boxes up. Yeah. And I, I had I'd done everything soon enough that I mailed it in. And it got there in plenty of time. It, it says something in a pandemic and a pandemic economy um, that people were focused, filled out their ballots, mailed them in. We've watched almost gavel to gavel. The process has it unfolded very meticulous and professional, kind of fascinating. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a good thing to see, considering all the circumstances people are living under, Chad. It is. It is. And all things considered, it, it went pretty smoothly. Good weather. Um, not, not, not too many incidents. Uh, it was, it was it, it, democracy. Yeah, that's really how it's supposed to be. Um, and... Perhaps those who have been voting uh, or who voted want to see an improvement on this subject you and I talk about every month, huh? <laughs> yep, yep. We, um, we're, we're, we're at an impasse on getting the stimulus that we need to keep this right. recovery going. And um, I sure hope that when member, members of Congress come back from uh, you know, they'll be back pretty soon. They should really be working very hard to get a new stimulus package in there, take care of unemployment insurance, which is gonna be lapsing at the end of the year, um, take, care of the, take care of COVID, um, get, get, a real, get real policy in place. Um, but but they've, they've got, they got to act, they have to act quickly to, on, on unemployment insurance and some other hardship relief because, because even though the jobs report has been better every month, if you look at the the change, if you look at where it is compared with where we were in February, we are still in a deep hole with a lot of hardship. Yeah. Well, Congress is coming back. We we just still don't know what the Senate is going to do um, or how cooperative they may or may not be. I mean, that's still the issue. Um but so we'll just have to see. But but yeah. So what? Two hundred seventy-one thousand jobs in October. Do I have the number right? No, no. There were more. There were more than that. There were there were six hundred. Oh. There were there were six hundred. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, you know, I, I guess I've been saying this for months. That's a huge number compared with anything we've seen in history. But so so is the jobs hole we're in, and we're only halfway back. We're, we're 10.1 million jobs below where we were in February still, oh. uh, notwithstanding the, and, and yeah, the, 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 the picture shows that we're in a hole and we're, we're the, the recovery rate is starting to slow down. We're not coming back as fast as we were in the first couple of months of the recovery. Um, and, and we're way below where we were in February. Um. 
Yeah. So, but this is the six hundred thirty thousand is still less than in any any of the previous months. That's right. right. That's right. We're, we've 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 been slowing down how many jobs we're adding, even though the the absolute number of jobs is big. It's getting smaller, and the hole is still there. How? What has? What is it about this month? Do you think that made it go down? Um, well, we we, we have, have economic. economic I'm, 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 Economic, economic activity has been growing. growing. People have had getting get back to work. Agreed. And then that's that's the, last 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 the reason it's going down, down is, is we lost a lot, a lot of, of money. money. Six six hundred dollars a week went away. Uh, and and some other some other other, other, other problems, problems where where, where we need. Or or yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm, you know, why I said 271 because my, my mind, I'm looking at too many numbers that was just in the leisure and hospitality industry. That's the number. Right. right. It's it's not, 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 in the in pandemic pandemic initial, and, and then it's, it's, back back yep. it's going back a little bit. Um, now, um, the the thing about the leisure and hospitality industry too, that is where people are employed for whom unemployment tends to be disproportionate, as we've discussed, correct? Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about people of color, women, African-Americans, Latinos, um, those, um, are, are those numbers, does this month make those numbers any better? Those, those numbers have, have all been better, better, but, but persists are issues. So, so it's getting better, better faster, faster white white than, than for, 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 for black, black or Latino people. Yeah, yeah, that continues to be, continues yeah, yeah. to be the case. Mind, 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 mind. Unemployment is higher, higher and the, the size, size of the population is going to be made up from the major. Yeah, yeah. From the blacks. blacks. And, 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 and it was that better. better. Chad, your audio is going in and out for some reason. Yeah, yeah I'm getting, getting feedback. Feedback. You are? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, keep talking. I'm, Let's I'm, see what happens. I'm getting, getting an, you're getting an echo. Hmm. What, what is it? Eternal, eternal, what, 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 what I tell you what, what usually works with this thing, refresh your browser. Okay. Okay. okay come right back. Let's see. Okay, let's see how we sound now. Okay, that sounds better. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay, let me, okay, let me do this. I'm gonna back up just a little bit because I missed a little something. Um, so 638,000 total a little less than usual. The 271,000 number I mentioned was in the leisure and hospitality industry where people of color, those usually hit most by the unemployment statistics are disproportionate. Um, but now some of those jobs are beginning to come back, correct? That's correct. All right. So is it, it as you have said in the past um the white unemployment rate usually goes down first and more swiftly yep but but what's happening with with african americans latinos does this month 
in uh, lower the unemployment rate for all of them as well. It did. They're, they're on, everybody's unemployment rates came down. Um, as, as is true historically, the white rate is lower and tends to come down faster in uh, the early stages of recovery. Um, and that's, that's happening now. And, and I'm calling it a recovery because we are really coming back. Um, but it, we, we can also call it a slump. Yeah. <laughs> because we're far down as well. It's a relative recovery. Yeah. Compared to what would be going on if this weren't a pandemic. And, you know, you and I have always kind of had our seatbelts on because of the unpredictability of the pandemic, right? And Right, and that's happening now. <laughs> There's right. a lot, lot of uncertainty about that. We're looking at Europe. Yep. They're shutting down. I mean, literally shutting all the way down again. Second wave. I don't know that America's gotten out of his first wave. <laughs> yeah, has it? That's right. We're in, a, we're in a plateau or maybe a shallow valley halfway up the mountain. <laughs> or, or, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in a situation like this, I guess people are still going to hire, try to come back until we have to shut back down again. And we can rest assured that if there is a new administration, the new administration has already said it's not going to play around. So when it comes to that, but then they've also said they're committed to seeing to it that people have money and resources that, that they're going to, they, I mean, when you're president, you know, Chad, if you, I were president, if you were president, I was vice president, we'd have to figure out how to do a shutdown and a competent way to keep the economy going at the same time, to walk and chew gum at the same time. That's right. If, you, if you're gonna work, if you're gonna do the job, right? That's right, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Now, it's, we, we, need more, we need more stimulus, we need more hardship relief, and that's gonna be politically difficult in what looks like a situation in which the, there's a, a Democratic president, a Republican Senate, which is a, which is a place that can stop almost anything. Right. And a um, and a slightly slightly reduced Democratic majority in the House, but but the the Senate is the Senate is the place where 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 you need to get some votes to to get um, the policies that the country needs. And I have to think that there, there there should be some senators who recognize the importance of relieving hardship and the importance of keeping the economy growing. Yeah, yeah. one would one would hope so. Um, as opposed to just um, being obstructionist in every way. Or I think people now are in this, you know, there were those two big words that Dr. King used at the March on Washington. And when he used them, nobody knew what he meant. It, the words were too big in 1963, but everybody is taking 50 years. But I think everybody knows what those words mean now. Interposition and nullification. <laughs> so that's what, I mean, that's what's been applied to any stimulus and what have you um, for the economy. And, and even for business, if those, if, the, if, if stimulus was there, if, if unemployment, if all those things were there working at the same time, would that not in the long run um, help business and prevent some of the businesses that we've seen from going out of business, right? Sure, absolutely. And you know, credit where credit is due. The CARES Act passed in March, by you know, the, with bipartisan support, right. provided a really healthy dose of stimulus and hardship relief, especially in unemployment insurance program. But it had arbitrary cutoff dates, and the six hundred dollars went away. This is supplement to benefits went away. And at the end of the year, the pandemic unemployment assistance program that brings in gig workers and people who fall through the cracks of the regular unemployment system, that disappears. Extra weeks of benefits disappear. And we've already seen things slowing down after that, after the $600 supplement to benefits went away in um, at the end of July. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you can you can you you can see how the the economy has been slowing down. If if it hadn't been for the CARES Act, uh, we, we would have been in an even deeper hole. Right, right, right. But, but didn't finish the job. 
so so there's a direct relationship between the expiration of what care is provided and the economy continuing to slow down we can the, we can the growth slow down yeah i mean the economy is still expanding but 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 not not fast enough to get us back quickly to where we need to be mm -hmm. um, assistance also then can we say in in this situation assistance for workers and consumers or should i say unemployed workers and consumers still helps the economy and business um and may even prevent some businesses from going out of business i mean we've been hearing all these stories about some businesses and I live here in New York. Some of these stories about some businesses that are just finished, they may never come back. Right. Yeah, so putting money in the hands of people who need it and will spend it quickly. Unemployed workers, um, people on SNAP, um, you know, people with, with limited resources, they'll spend the money. Yeah. They'll spend, and, and they'll spend it quickly and that will support spending Yes, yes, there are some places that are, that are you know, there are not gonna to be too many restaurant meals bought, but groceries, paying the rent, those kinds of things, um, that's important. And, and if, if that happens, the business doesn't have to lay off somebody, they have money to spend, it, 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 it works its way through the economy. Mm -hmm. The old Keynesian multiplier. Yeah, um, yeah. If, you, if you give tax cuts to the rich, they save it and doesn't, it doesn't do the same kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is state and local governments, they've, 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 they've lost, they've had, they've had to reduce employment by a lot, um, a lot of it in education. And that means, because they have balanced budget requirements, and that means that those folks are, are out of work and are not, um, not putting money into the economy. Um, state and local government relief was, was something that that there was there was some of it in so far, but we needed we needed to give more to state and local governments so that they would not be laying off as many people as they are, so they would keep providing services. Right. Unlike the federal government, they can't borrow; um, they have to balance their operating budget, mm -hmm. and so they raise taxes and cut spending and lay off people, and that's what we would call anti-stimulus. Mm -hmm. As we have reason to believe that as the weather changes, that may affect the virus. Um, as the weather changes, to what extent does that affect the economy, the, the need for certain industries to have employees working or not? I mean, to what, are there certain things that expand and contract that we may see reflected in the in the coming months as it gets colder. Yeah, um, I, I, obviously um, the outdoor things um, will uh, eating out eating outdoors, going on vacations um, uh, to to uh, warm. To, but but um, you know you, 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 you'll change from air conditioner bills to elect to uh, to heating bills, so that that's that could be a wash. Um, mm. Not not sure not sure exactly how the composition will change. A um, lot, lot of stuff goes through, but 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 the se but there are seasonal characteristics to, to different industries. I, I just don't have a good good quick list of them. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that it'll make a big difference in the aggregate, but it will change the composition of where things are going better and where things are going worse. Right, 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 right. Uh, but you mentioned the, the you know heat. People got to pay the heating bill. They need money to pay the heating bill, don't they? That's right. Um, labor force participation rate is still uh, 1.7 below February. Um, so we've still got a way to go to recover from where we were. Yeah, so we, we we talk about the unemployment rate, but that doesn't count people who who've who've stopped stopped looking, um, and the labor force participation rate takes into account both the unemployed and the employed, but but it doesn't. But but when it goes down, it, mean, it means that people are, people have dropped out. 
and it and it as as as, as you said, we're we're below where we were in February um, because there are a lot of people who who lost their jobs, stopped looking for work, or or not required to look for work um, in, in some circumstances for for what they're what they're receiving, but most mostly um, people not not looking because they don't think they can really find a job. Um, we, 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 we went through a lot of that uh, talking about how the unemployment rate wasn't a complete indicator in the recovery from the Great Recession, how, how there was still a lot more economic slack than the unemployment rate was measuring. Well, it's the same thing here. Um, we're seeing that again. Um, and so the so labor force participation, uh, share of the population with a job, they, they, they ticked up some in, um, in October, but they're still below where we were in February. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and and the the long term unemployed is is a st statistic that that we're starting to, to pay attention to again. If people are are uh, left out, if people um, have been looking for work for twenty seven weeks or more, well, regular state that that's grown by a lot. I think it's I, I think the number the number of people has doubled left from like one point eight million to three point six million, and it's and it's and it's going up, and one of the relevant things about that is regular state unemployment insurance benefits max out at 26 weeks. Some states provide fewer than that. And that's been supplemented by, by CARES Act measures um, that provide an extra 13 weeks of federal benefits and that provide um, the pandemic unemployment, unemployment assistance program that allows people who slip through the cracks uh, in the regular system, uh, gig workers being one, but people who need to take care of sick family members being another. That doesn't usually qualify you for uh, unemployment insurance. So um, those those things. Uh, so 27 weeks, more people being unemployed for 27 weeks, and fewer unemployment insurance benefits being provided beyond the regular 26 weeks of state benefits um, is a budding problem. Yeah, that means people don't have anything. Yep, and and and, and the stuff the stuff goes away at the end of the year if, if policymakers don't do something before then. Can't wait for the new Congress. Yeah, yeah. And imagine if if you if there's a household um, where there are two parents, two adults, um, and a family. I mean, it's bad enough with with one adult and a family, a single parent. And you're beyond that 27 weeks. What are you supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it, it, it's it's tough. It's it it is it it is really tough because there's not jobs to be found. I mean, normally, um, the the average duration of unemployment uh, spells in a in a healthy economy is well below 26 weeks, but in a recession economy, the average spell becomes longer than 26 weeks. And that's that's where we're gonna be heading. We're not there yet, but that's where we're gonna be heading. Mm -hmm. And Chad, in a, I deal, I mean, you have a pandemic. Ideally, you have a job with some form of at best health insurance, at worst income to help you stay healthy. That's right. Being broke does not help your health in, in terms of, 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 of diet and food and, and healthy options <laughs> for healthiness right. um, in the middle of a pandemic. In, right. In, 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 it's, it's no good in normal times. It's even worse in a pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is something. And as we said, Europe, Europe is hit its second wave. So at, we, and, and, you have to suspect is weather related. So we have to get ready for whatever is going to be happening here um, in the United States. Um, so, yeah, folks, that is the October jobs report. Chad updates us and gives us his analysis. We also invite you to go to sinonbudget.org. Let me just lift this up. It's a, it's a couple of weeks old, but it's a headline. I'm just seeing it. Arlock Sherman on the uh, blog at Center on Budget Head. Actually, speaking of households, headline four in 10 children live in a household struggling 
to uh, afford basics. Um, now, Chad, as you know, my economics isn't great, but four in 10 means 40%. Am I right about that? That's right. And 40% is 10% less than 50%. So that means 10% less than half the children in America live in a household that can't afford basics. That, 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 that's right. That who's, who's, whose income, whose income is, is below the poverty level. That's right. Yep. Yep. We, we, we actually have another report coming out next week that will, that will be, be uh, talking about a whole, a whole bunch of stuff about both the economy and the, um, and the degree of hardship. Um, and we'll be to, to, to try to wake policymakers up to the need to really take action. Yes. Please wake them up. Wake, wake them up the way your state woke the world up. <laughs> the way Pennsylvania woke the world up, if you don't mind, if y'all not already, not too busy. Uh, Chad Stone, sit on budget. Uh, and um, you can also find his analyses on his Twitter feed, Chad CBPP, for sit on budget and policy priorities. Chad CBPP, check him out right there as well. Chad, as always, thank you, buddy. Oh, you're welcome. Great to talk to you, Mark. Always great to talk to you.